Hey y'all, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of the Evolution Toy AFC 01i Legio's toy released in November 2018 at an MSRP of 28,800 yen. This toy was the third Evolution Toy Legio's released following the blue H and red Z versions in November 2017 and July 2018 respectively. I've reviewed both those toys separately and you can click on the handy card now or later to check out that review. The Red Z version was a limited distribution special, but you can find the H and I versions at Big Bad Toy Store. Click the link in the comments below, get the toy you want, and help this channel out in the process. The green version of the toy comes in the same box and tray as the red version, with only minor cosmetic changes. The contents of the box also mirror the red version in every way, including the bubble tape they wrapped around the head fin. You get a gun, an alternate magazine for stowing the gun in the missile pod, that missile pod you would stow the gun in, alternate intakes with open ports, do note that the toy inexplicably comes with the soldier mode intakes installed, missiles that you can stow under the chest, four character figures including a pilot. One thing you can't see here is that the fingers come packaged within the arms of the toy. You'll need to remove them from their baggies and install them. Behind the black tray, you'll find a bag that contains instructions, stickers, a set of three fingers, and an additional page of instructions that cover the updated shoulder array and the additional fingers. I have scans of all the documents available on anymoon.com. Since I already have a comprehensive review of the H and Z versions, we'll begin with what differentiates this toy from previous releases. At first glance, it may seem the included figures are the same that came with the H version, but that's not the case. The updated paint apps signify that these are Ray figures, and the missile launchers characteristic of Styx VR-52F have been appropriately deleted. Unfortunately, there is no detail of the big gun from Ray's VR-52T. Obviously one of the things that makes this toy unique is the head, which is very nicely done, good shape to it, nice paint accents between the red, the silver, and the yellow there. Now I thought it'd be nice if the red area were a translucent piece of plastic with maybe a camera lens detail behind it, but if you look at the blue version of the toy, there's nothing there that would be an eye, so maybe it's wrong to assume the green version should have an eye like this. Now. If they bring the head all the way forward, it kind of nestles down. If we're going to skip ahead into more of the review content here, uh, the head also can't articulate in this direction because it hits this big sensor array. And now that's one of my big beefs with this toy is it's big enough scale where it's good that they integrated the sensor array, but the sensor array is not supposed to work by flipping out on a panel. This panel is supposed to still be behind the toy and the sensor array is just supposed to flip around and be on the back of this piece here, which would enable it to pivot up and the head to look left and right. So a bummer that Evolution toy just kind of mimicked what CMs did instead of coming up with a better solution. Now you can bring the head this way, but the back of the head's still gonna hit that array. You can look down and you can look up and that's all good. Now I do have the chest intakes that are meant for soldier mode on there right now and you can see they've closed up they look pretty good there's also a gimmick while we're doing close-ups there's a ride armor inside there which is a nice little detail so again the blue toy was the first release and it had some issues one of which was this sensor array in the back you can see as it's stowed the fin on top is a little too long and actually smashes up against the back so when you flip it out you're gonna have that permanent little kink at the top that you'll always have to bend back into position, so that's a problem. It just flips straight out. On the Zeta version and now on the Iota version, you have the ability to open up this panel and then you can see it has actually slid forward a little bit, so it's not pressing that array, that sensor fin, up against the back of the housing. So as we open it up, which is a little funky, we can bring this around and then we can slide it and then pivot it up and out, and there's no crooked fin. The hands on this toy are truly awful, as they were on the blue toy before them, and then the red toy. The benefit of the red and green versions of the toy is that you get the standard set of fingers, which are pinching pretty tight, and they slot right in on this peg. And theoretically, you can get the hand with everything together to fit in the forearm for fighter mode, uh, but it's a very snug fit and you have to have everything perfect. On the red and green versions, we get these little looser grip fingers that allow you to hold the gun 
without having basically zero tolerance for or zero forgiveness if you don't have everything perfectly lined up but it's still just an absolutely awful design and you would have hoped that they would have gone with just pop off the hand and pop on a gun gripping hand that's what everyone else does or give us legitimately decent articulated hands that could fit in the housing any of those would be good options instead we get this debacle of a hand but it does have a peg on the inside which also rotates with the peg on the outside which makes things so much fun uh, that will when you get everything lined up it'll grip the hand really well if you have a blue version of the toy and it only has these tight fingers it's quite possible your hand is going to pop apart on you it just caused a little bit too much pressure in the hand and it's an awful awful design this toy comes with missiles that fit underneath the intakes. You can see on the blue version, they actually painted the wrong side of the missiles red, but this was fixed on the red version of the toy as well as the green version, so that's all good. There's also a missile pod that attaches between the arms. Uh, on my red version of the toy, it helps because there's this huge like QC issue here uh, where I've got this giant gap between the top of the toy and the arm. I have a similar gap on the green version. It's not quite as pronounced. This Using this pod really locks the arms together and at least gets the gap to be similar in height on either side instead of having one arm that's like way up and the other arm that's a little more flush, which is a potential issue. Now, speaking of issues, on my blue version of the toy, the hard point that the gun attaches to uh, popped off. Uh, so... I don't recommend putting the gun on the hard point, especially on the blue version of the toy. So you do have a nice little option that you can take the gun off of that hard point. And you can see on my green version, I just took it off and it didn't break. So hopefully they've addressed this. So you can take this additional magazine. You can remove the one that's on the toy. Now, no bullet detail there but there is bullet detail in the optional magazine so we can go ahead and plug that in and then we can take our toy and we can turn it around and there is a slot in that missile pod and we can use that to just fish in this crooked magazine and it will fit very securely now on the blue version of the toy uh, it does not at all fit securely on the green version. It's so tight, I can't even get it in. So, Roar! Ugh. There it goes. Easy peasy. So obviously that's not going to go anywhere now. Uh, on the blue version of the toy, it just falls right out. There's like no stiffness there whatsoever. So that is kind of a bummer because Aoshima was able to do that without needing a, another magazine on the Aoshima toy. You just slide that curved magazine in and everything works out okay. So that's your optional way of stowing the gun that might be a little less traumatic to your hard points. This toy does feature an opening canopy and removable pilot figure. The pilot figure does have a little hole in the butt which corresponds to a peg in the seat which should keep the pilot figure from bouncing around too much during handling. My green and red versions also have this heads up display at the front, which is a nice little detail. It wasn't present for whatever reason on my blue version. When I close the canopy, I also get this little fit issue or it doesn't seem to close perfectly flush, which is obviously a bummer. This toy does have integrated landing gear. The landing gear are very nicely done. The front landing gear does a great job resembling the line art and it's metal. It even has a stamped arrow at the front of it, uh, which is again, straight from the line art. So that's all good to see. The rear landing gear are a little bit different story. They do have uh, nice detail work to them. They look good enough. They have the tires that spin. Uh, but the way the door works is nothing like the line art. And it's problematic because now the doors hang down just as low as the landing gear. So the toy will actually sit on the doors as frequently as it will on the wheel. So that obviously is a big problem. The, li the line art shows that the door should start up in the center of the leg uh, and then kind of cut off, not go all the way on the interior like this does. And the way it works here is we've got these doors that you have to open in order to get this rear door out. Now there is kind of a cool little peg inside that 
fits within the landing gear. So as you open the door, it tugs the landing gear out for you and makes it a lot easier to actually pull it out. So that was good to see. Just really unfortunate with the whole uh, triangle shaped door that they went with and the fact that it's gonna sit on that. Every toy manufacturer has really struggled with the Legios fighter mode and Evolution Toy is no different. They have really failed to collapse the back end of the fighter mode. So you get this really bad tail section. Part of that is these heels. So they have definitely chosen to go with the heel shape from soldier mode rather than fighter mode. In fighter mode, this is always drawn as being flat, and so these two heels bump right up against each other. They also should slide back inward and be tied up against the back of the foot, which they're not doing either. The way Evolution Toy has done it is really silly because it makes you wonder how this could even function as propulsion. There's just so little room there. So you would wanna see those be flat and pushed up and maybe have a mechanism where you could push in this edge in soldier mode to get that shape that it has now, but they didn't do that. And this is really the scale and price point that you would hope a manufacturer would do that. You would also hope this part of the foot should be much, much shorter. This should be fatter, it should be fatter all the way through here. Uh, but they went with a very long, thin look that just does not work at all for fighter mode. Uh, might work a little bit better in diver mode, but here, just bad. And to make matters worse, I have a QC issue where one of my feet is pretty loose on there and the other foot is perfectly stiff. So this foot is always dangling down and this one is always in the proper position. Another issue that this toy has in fighter mode that pretty much every Legios toy has had in fighter mode is that the kneecap is supposed to come all the way flush with this housing right here. So it's supposed to come up around the thigh be flush here and air would just blow around. Instead, you get this big opening here where all the air would be captured and obviously this thing would never fly like that. So that is just, it's too bad to see again at this scale and price point, these are the kind of things that they should have been solving. So this thigh should be thinner and the housing should have the ability to kind of extend and pivot inward to cover that thigh entirely and eliminate that gap. There are a couple other shortcomings that are a little easier to see from underneath the toy. The first is that the housing behind the head comes down way too far. Inexplicably, it should stop right at the inset part of the intake, but instead it comes all the way down here before it juts back. So now it's got this low hanging area that it's going too far down and it shouldn't be. The other thing that we have is that there is no uh, accordion ability to this section here. So on say a Toy Nami Masterpiece toy, you get the chest area and then it immediately goes into the crotch area because there's a sleeve within that will extend for soldier mode. The Evolution toy does not have that sleeve. It actually is a physical piece that doesn't change shape at all. Also the intakes inexplicably come way far down so they don't have the ability to bring the hips up further. So if they didn't want to do a sliding sleeve within, they could have just cut off the intake shorter and put a pivot or a, an ability to slide the hips forward down within the crotch. But they didn't do that either. So I, this is how you end up with a toy that is way too long in fighter mode. Fighter mode, obviously not the best representation of the line art, uh, but it's all right looking. There are some issues with handling it though. Uh, the front of the toy has a tendency to get this banana effect going on when it's sitting on the landing gear. It's much more pronounced on the blue version of the toy. It actually ends up laying on its chest half the time. And the issue with this is that Evolution Toy went with a design where they have these pegs and the winglets that are attaching to the intakes. And that is the only thing that's really keeping any solidity at all in the front of the toy. There needs to be something at the bottom here that also locks it into place and there is nothing. So on the Gakken and Toinami toys, the head latches very securely into the nose and is the second point of stability. And you don't get that here. So you have one point of failure that fails enough for it to feel wobbly. Also, this head should be tucked in tighter. All they really had to do was put a peg in the back of the head to really 
accomplish what they need to do. They didn't do that, and so you get a wobble. Also, going to the back of the toy, you have these tiny little pegs in the arms that go into those tiny little slots in the legs, and it's just insufficient. So you can get it pegged in, it, it can work for some photos, but if you're actually gonna handle this toy, you're probably gonna knock those arms out of place. So Evolution Toy, Fighter Mode, Legios, I would say it's maybe good enough without actually being good. Another little thing you see here, this random dark swirl in my plastic. So uh, not thrilled with the quality control on this product. This toy does have opening missile bays. There are four on the forearms, two on each forearm. Of the four, I only have one that actually functions properly. Uh, this is a change from my red version, which all of them worked fine on the forearm, so I don't know what happened there. There are six red dots representing six missiles here. Obviously, that's pretty terrible detail work. On the other side, if I open this bay up, it just kind of falls off. It's kind of missing a peg on one side or something. Uh, on the other arm, they're just not aligned properly, so they're really tough to open. It's kind of funky. So there you go. There you have your six missiles in there. You're coming up to the top. You're supposed to have eight missiles vertically aligned that are the same as the missiles in the forearm. Instead, you get 10 horizontally aligned tennis balls. So that's a little bit funky. And then we move down to the leg where we're supposed to have three missile bays all having four missiles within them. But what do we have? We have a first missile bay at the top with eight missiles represented by tiny red dots that are not the same size as the previous red dots in the form. And then moving down here, we have six missiles that are red dots similar to the forearm and then the same thing on the other side so we have four total missile bays none of them have the appropriate number of missiles in them all of them kind of different size it's just funky so it's cool that they have the bays it would have been even cooler if they paid attention to how they were supposed to work and what was supposed to be in them well, I obviously have plenty of qualms about this toy. I will say that I think it looks fantastic in diver mode. Now, uh, there is a problem with the stiffness of the elbow, just like there was on the red version. It's not quite strong enough to hold up the, uh, the gun. And you don't have, like you did on CMs, CMs has a little point where you could bring the forearm up that way. You don't have that twist point on this toy, so you can't just cheat and make it so gravity won't pull it down. That's too bad. So instead, you are going to have to pull the gun out forward and then you can kind of lock the elbow in place and that will alleviate the issue. Now, QC issue you can see happening here. My forearm obviously splitting apart and it shouldn't be. Uh, I'm sure a little dot of glue would resolve that, but what are you gonna do? Now, one cool thing about this toy is an articulation difference. They've put a pivot point at the base of the leg. So you can pivot the legs out at the hips and you can pivot them again further out at the knees. So that makes diver mode a lot more fun. You can get some more aggressive poses going on the feet. Obviously you can come back and forward. You've got a toe and you can use those feet to change the angle that you've got the toy at if you don't really like it and you don't want to goof around with this joint here or this joint here the feet offer you another position for pivoting. So that's all good. So diver mode, attractive, uh, not without its faults, obviously, but I think definitely a strong point on this toy. While this might not be the most perfect representation of the line art, soldier mode does look pretty attractive to me. I think they've done a good job of capturing a pretty beefy looking mech, even if it is their own interpretation in some ways. Now we've already touched on these intakes being a little too high with that chest plate a little low, which creates this recessed head area. Not too stoked on that. It does look a little narrow through the body and then bigger on the limbs. But, you know, again, it looks pretty beefy. It looks aggressive, so that's good. We've talked about the articulation of the head. Now we get to the arms and we can bring the arm out like this. We could also bring the arm out below the shoulder. So those are two good things that you can deal with. Also the hinge the arm is on allows the shoulder to rock back and forth. So that's all good stuff. Then there's a ratcheted joint right below that. And then you have a twist at the bicep with a double jointed elbow. So the double, double jointed elbow is just allowing you to get a little better than 90 degrees. It's 
not revolutionary by any means, but as far as Legio's toys goes, it's pretty good. And again, it doesn't have that pivot that the CM's toy had, which is too bad because that was kind of fun. Now going down to the hips, you can go all the way back and you could pivot out to a fair amount as far as Legio's toys goes. Again, that's pretty decent. If you look at other toys out there, pretty minimal. There are double joints at the knee, which is cool. So you can come out there and then back here. Now, unfortunately, the housing for the leg here prohibits you from going further than the 90 degrees, but at least you've got the 90 degree there. And again, we had that twist and we've already talked about the feet, which aren't too special. They have a little rock to them. They have a toe to them. They have a heel, but there isn't much you can do uh, besides that. It'd be nice if you could pull them out and angle them like you can on some other toys out there. So overall, it is decent. You're gonna be able to have some fun posing it. You're gonna get it in some good looking poses, but it can't do everything you can dream of. Now, one more thing you can do from an articulation standpoint is use the waist, but to do that, there is a little bit of a trick to it. There is the cockpit stowed in the back of the waist. So if you want to engage the waist twist, you have to get that cockpit out and then twist at the waist. So it is cool and it does get your back your your back area a little further away from the body, but it does make for some good looking poses. And obviously I haven't said it, but these things should really lock into position a lot better than they do. But it's just a minor annoyance. They push back into position fairly easily, so not a big deal. If metal content is your jam, then you're gonna be let down by this toy. At 31 centimeters long in fighter mode, it's less than a centimeter smaller than the 132 scale Gakin, but only two thirds the weight. I ended my previous review saying this is the best of a truly mediocre lot, and I still stand by this. Visually, I think the Toynami MPC is the best version of the Legios or Robotech Alpha to date but it's even more of a build quality debacle than this thing is, and time has not been nice to the plastic they used there. The CM's Legios is awful. The 132 scale Gakken toy is chunky and stiff in comparison with paint schemes that aren't even ballpark accurate, and you won't get things like a mounted gun or missile bays there. So if I had to buy one Legios toy, this is probably the one I'd get. However, if you asked me what would I buy right now for 23,000 to 28,000 yen, the answer would not be this toy. Check out my full review on anymoon.com and as always, thanks for watching.